Welcome to this episode of the Common Sense Skeptic, which is going to be a very quick breakdown of a recent podcast that appeared on the Fresh and Fit channel on Rumble on September 8th. Mainly because the FNF channel you may have heard was recently demonetized on YouTube. This is going to be quick and dirty since the team is hard at work breaking down the 400 page indictment document that summarizes the 75,000 pages of evidence currently stacked against the Tates in their Romanian criminal trial for forming an organized criminal group and trafficking humans in a continuous form. Andrew Tate has an additional charge of in a continuous form and Tristan caught an additional charge of instigation to assault or other violence. The indictment was released on June 15th of 2023, almost three months before this FNF interview was aired on Rumble. This podcast is an interview between the two FNF chuckleheads and a lawyer that represents the Tates named Joe McBride. The title of this 94 minute live stream, Tate attorney Joe McBride and former Fed expose trafficking victims lies against the Tates is a complete violation of an order handed down from a Florida civil court where the Tates and this lawyer were forbidden from mentioning the defendants names or details at any point in the future. We're guessing whatever Fed they planned on having join them didn't bother to show up. The civil case itself is a violation of a condition of their release into judicial control handed down by a Romanian court that neither defendant and by extension their legal teams are to contact victims and witnesses in the criminal case. This is the most obvious possible example of witness intimidation imaginable. As we normally do with longer interviews, we're going to hit the highlights here, provide context and examples, straighten out some lies, and do away with all the chaff and repetition that McBride obviously uses to brainwash simple minds as he does here with Dumb and Dumber, who do nothing but nod along in agreement as the Tate's public face of their legal squad lies repeatedly to their faces. We'll try to keep this short and sweet, but with this topic, we'll be lucky to keep it under two hours. Here we go with introductions. My name is Joe McBride. I'm an attorney from Brooklyn, New York. I represent Andrew and Tristan Tate, amongst uh, some other people. And, uh, you know, we're in this battle. We're in this battle against uh, cancellation. We're in this battle against uh, misinformation, true misinformation, mm -hmm. and fighting on the forefront of what it means to be a man. And uh, can you be a man in this world and not be persecuted for it and not go to jail for it? So right off the bat, McBride is falsely presenting this case against the Tates as being one of free speech and trying to pretend that their current social media campaigns and branding are relevant to the case at hand. It is not at all relevant. Fine gentlemen like you who are on this podcast on a regular basis, speaking your mind, uh, not caring what the establishment thinks, people like uh, Andrew and Tristan, politicians like Donald Trump. McBride now attaching the Tates to Trump to gain support of the MAGA crowd, which has been a very poor tactic that has been backfiring on the Tates. Conservatives don't seem to like international sex trafficking <laughs> any more than liberals do. Just try to traffic a Texas rancher's daughter and see what happens to you. So we say divisive things, we speak our mind, yeah. and uh, everybody's being persecuted for it. And yeah. we have to defend it. We have to defend it no matter what. Without it, Free democracy, uh, free corporations, free trade, free anything cannot exist. Yeah. Right. Apparently, in McBride's head, free trade and free corporations are all somehow affected by and wrapped up in this court battle because reasons. None of which have to do with criminal organizations or trafficking in human beings. If this declaration was intentional, that's what a teacher might call a gibberish test. An utterance of complete nonsense to see if the class was paying attention. These two classless clowns were obviously not paying attention because they nodded right along with it. Yep, 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 yep. Obviously, um, the Tates have been, you know, the victims of what it looks like to me like a head job, right? Maybe I might be a little bit biased from being their friends and knowing them personally, then seeing these, you know, charges come out of nowhere, and I'm like, this doesn't make sense. I've spent a good amount of time with these guys. They're not human traffickers. They're not gross. Like, this doesn't make sense. Here we have Thing One admitting that he spent a good amount of time with his friends, the Tates, and that he doesn't think they're sex trafficking I used sex as a tool to make women love me so they'd obey me and live in my house and make me money. That, that's what I wanted. I have to f her so she obeys me. I don't give a shit about having sex with beautiful women. I f them so they listen to me, so I can get what I actually want, which is not them. We'll bookmark that one for later. Are they being targeted and why? Uh, there is no question about it. Uh, there are a multitude of reasons for why they're being targeted. 
uh, none more easier to ascertain than what they're saying, what their message is. Okay, the Tates and their female accomplices are not being targeted for their message. They are being targeted, justifiably, for criminal charges as outlined previously. This spin cycle from McBride should actually get him disbarred, but he keeps going into deep fantasy here about world governments and world banks. You have an entire corporate structure, an entire public partnership between the uh, world governments and uh, world banks and corporations that are trying to emasculate men, yeah. to neuter uh, young men, to change the, the genders of people at a very young age, to take fathers out of the home, to remove traditional values of any kind. Uh, that is a fact, right? And then when you look at Andrew and Tristan and their ability to uh, put out uh, a message on Twitter, on Rumble, uh, on TikTok, whatever it's going to be, and get 10 million men, 10 million young boys who may have not have changed their lives and get those guys to jump up and go to the gym, that kind of power is crucial in the day that we live in. And that kind of power is a threat to the establishment that Andrew refers to as the Matrix. Yeah. And this is why they're being attacked. They're being attacked not because of what they've done. It's because of who they are and what they say. Influence. Yeah, yeah influence. and I think their influence yeah. is, is something that they really fear. The influence the Tates have is something that's of great concern. Absolutely. But not because Tate is telling boys to go to the gym. It's of great concern because Andrew Tate specifically uses his influence and recycled self-help scripts to funnel young boys into his online scam called Hustlers University for $50 a month with the greater goal of luring them when they get older into his secret society called the War Room where he can make $8,000 a year from them. That supposed positive message for boys, one that is loaded with misogyny against young females specifically, is Tate's first step towards indoctrination. And it's incredibly obvious to outsiders that this is the male equivalent of Tate's lover boy pimp method that he uses to recruit webcam models. The Tates, both of them, tell a person what they want to hear, then groom that person until the Tates can exploit them for money. With the girls, Tate's end goal is webcam sex work. With the young boys and PhD subscribers that Andrew calls losers, the end goal is war room annual memberships. How'd you end up meeting them and getting on the team? Some people in in, uh, in, uh, in my world, in Tate's world, knew each other. Mm -hmm. And they said, hey, what about this guy? Check him out. They looked at me and said, it sounds good. Uh, we met, we met up, and, uh, you know, the rest is history. It was, uh, you went to Romania, right? Yeah, yeah, I went to Romania. I took, uh, went to Tucker Carlson. I put that whole nice. interview together. Oh, nice. So people in Tate's world knew people in McBride's world. You know what Tate's world looks like, right? Some of the worst scum that humanity has ever crawled out of its asshole reside in the Tate inner circle. Pimps, traffickers, guys who brag about beating on their girls and show pictures and videos of the bruises they gave them to their buddies in the war room. They force the women to get branded with tattoos of their pimp's name. People who are now, one by one, getting exposed for their crimes. Like this imbecile who called himself Money Pilot. Within hours of the release of the recent BBC documentary done by Matt Shea, this pilot for Delta Airlines named Jonathan Bow was suspended from Delta. The company declaring that they had zero tolerance for their employees conducting illicit activities. Yeah. What was your first impression of Andrew and Tristan when you met them for the first time? So one thing about Andrew and Tristan, as you guys know, is they are who, who they are in person and online. And I, I recognize that immediately. Real recognize is real. Mm -hmm. So I could tell by the way I interacted with them, that I went, by the way I shook their hands, that they were the same people 24-7, 365, and I respect that a lot. McBride makes this statement that Andrew and Tristan Tate are the same people in real life that you see online. However, that line is in direct conflict with another statement made by Tate's Romanian legal team where they were trying to convince people that Andrew Tate is playing a character when you see him in his How to Be an Online Pimp tutorials. According to McBride and these two Tate dick riders, Andrew Tate is the same foul mouth misogynistic piece of crap that you see in every video. Slap, slap, grab, choke, shut up bitch, sex. There was nobody sort of stepping into the gap saying, hey, I'm willing to take on this case, stand up in front of the world and say, you can't do this. What's happening to them is wrong. Maybe one of the reasons nobody wanted to take this case is because the Tates made this declaration about Romanian lawyers during one of their emergency room broadcasts. What do men like you look for in their transactional slash business attorneys? Flexibility. Don't be a Mr. Follow this the rules. Yeah, no Mr. I'm, lo I'm looking for better call Saul. Absolutely. I'll make it happen. That's what we need. That's what real G's need. Get, me, Mr. Out, get well, me out of jail. Well, the law says. The law says you're guilty. I said get me out of jail. So before we found our lawyer, we met a bunch of lawyers here in Romania. We we're like, look, I mean, well, speeding was a topic we brought up. And there was this. Our, our lawyer is a G. Shout out to my lawyer. He is a G. 
But before we found him, we went and <sighs> interviewed some bimbo in her suit who sat there and started talking about laws to us. Well, if you're banned from driving and you get caught driving, what's gonna happen? And I don't, she, and I don't she, go see a lawyer to talk about the law. And she said, well, then you go to jail. And Andrew looks at her in the face and said, not if I have the right lawyer, I don't. And we left. Yes, right. What, what you're, you're telling me that I'm gonna go to jail. Then why am I gonna hire you? Failure. I, I walked in there and said, listen, I've committed multiple felonies. I've committed multiple felonies. Am I gonna go to jail? Well, probably. Well then see ya, bye. I won't Why would I give you my money? You're useless. I went to some other man, that was a female. I went to a male, a man's office, said I've committed multiple felonies. There are things we can do. We could try this, we could try that. No I make, problem. I make one call. You don't go to jail. If there's no problem. No problem. We, we send this. somebody else to jail. We send him, he is the new Andrew. Yeah. He shave his head and he go. <laughs> I'm like, oh, he's cool. That's the lawyer I want. That's the lawyer I want. So nobody wants, when, when you're talking to your legal clients, don't start talking Mr. Legal Schmeagle. Because yeah. you, think you, you think you sound smart. Well, I went to law school and it says on page- We four, don't care. We don't care. About the law. It says on page 48 of the Geek Bible that on the point two one four that if I'm a nerd and then Scott Adams called me, no one cares. <laughs> How can you help me How much fix does my it problems? cost to make this all go away? That's what we want to hear. We're thinking maybe nobody wanted to take these two assholes as clients for good reason. They weren't after lawyers or legal representation. They were after a yes man. And they seem to have found one in Joe McBride. It's not very often that a man has a chance to show up for, for two warriors. These are world champion kickboxers, warriors online, chess warriors, the whole nine. These are brilliant, brilliant guys. Can somebody please, in the comments, explain why Tate's chess record is constantly being harped upon? This shyster mentions it a couple of times in this same interview. Not only does Tate's three-digit chess rating have no relevance to this case, the brothers' claims of being chess wizards are completely false. Andrew Tate never won a chess tournament in his life, and his brother, or rather sister, as he signed into the U.S. Chess Federation, came in seventh of ten in the only chess tournament on record for him from the first grade. So Trissy finished middle of the pack, just like his older brother, who in his second grade tournament the same year, came in third of five. As for their kickboxing careers, we also went through this in part one. Iska kickboxing records obviously need to be taken with a gigantic grain of salt. McBride insinuates that Tristan is also a world kickboxing champion, when in fact Trissy was only ever a European champion in a relatively minor league among a very small field of competitors, and he can't even fight anymore due to his shoulder injury. These are the facts. Yeah, people are really confused as to what's going on, what's civil, what's criminal, what lawyers defending what, what's going on. Um, I am one of the lawyers. Mm -hmm. I am the public face. I am the point of intersection for a lot of the legal teams and strategies and PR people that talk to each other. So again, McBride claims to be the point of intersection for all these different legal teams. However, McBride cannot practice law in Romania. Something else to keep in mind moving forward. What is the main distinction between the U.S. case versus the Romanian case. So the Romanian case is a Romanian criminal case. They've been accused of uh, a few different things in the Romanian court of law, mm -hmm. and they have to prove their innocence according to the rules in a Romanian court. Oh, if only that were true. Because of all the defendants in the history of criminal trials, these two brothers in crime would be the least likely of any of them to ever be able to meet that bar. No, Joe, just as in the U.S. and most of the Western world, the presumption of innocence is a core tenet of the Romanian judicial process as well. It's Article 23 of the Romanian Constitution. Yes, Romania has a constitution. That may be news to some people. They have a very good a legal team out there, which I work with and consult with on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. But that is a Romanian criminal case under Romanian law. In the United States, in Florida, we have sued one of the women and some of the people who were involved in the Romanian case. So let me explain. There's this yeah. woman named Emma, mm -hmm. and she's from Florida. Joe McBride, you've just violated the Florida order of pseudonym on your civil case twice. Once by naming the victim, the other by identifying where she's from. And she went to Romania after ba basically soliciting uh, Tristan to, to go there and to start life over for whatever reason. Now, this statement is pure fabricated garbage. The chat logs obtained directly from Tristan's devices demonstrate how Tristan fished this victim off of Reddit. Yes, Reddit. And then through a matchmaker site. 
The transcripts demonstrate that Tristan contacted Emma. This is all in the indictment released June 15th of 2023. There are also chat logs between the victim and her parents, chats where she had already identified the fact that other women in that home were being trafficked, and she had already identified Tristan and Andrew as terrible, evil people. She gets to Romania and she's there for a total of six days. Six days, and in that time, uh, she figures out um, that uh, she's not going to be the end-all, be-all over there. Mm -hmm. She starts trouble mm -hmm. over there. Jealous of the other women that are there, etc. Insanely jealous. Jealousy played no role here. In fact, this victim took pity on another girl and planned to escape the locked house with her, having purchased airline tickets for both of them to get them to London. Insanely jealous, and then accuses them of you've been trafficking. Yeah. And gets the embassy involved, and this big thing explodes. More fiction. The embassy was not called by Emma. It was called by her parents, who were afraid that Emma's attempt to escape the house might be dangerous for her and her friend. Emma did not contact the police directly, and therefore did not accuse the brothers of anything at all prior to the raid. Her statements and the statements of other witnesses after the raid caused Dicot to open an investigation. And over the course of that investigation, the authorities determined what charges were to be filed against the Tays and their accomplices in this case. This is blatant misrepresentation of Emma's role in these events. Next up, Abbott and Costello flash up the first page of the civil action against the victims and Emma's family, with all their names exposed, again enabling that lawyer to breach the pseudonym order of the court on this matter. Um, in the circuit court of the 15th Judicial Cir uh, Circuit uh, in and for Palm Beach County, Florida, Civil Division, Tristan and Andrew uh, are the plaintiffs. And then you got here, Emma Gabby, an individual. Uh, just so you guys know, Emma Gabby is the main chick that he's referring to right now. And then Aliona is the, I think she's from Aldova, but she lives in England. She's a, uh, I think she's a dancer, an exotic dancer. And uh, she was the one that made the accusation against Andrew. This is another attempt, this time by the interviewer, to slander one more victim in this case. Even if Aliona was an exotic dancer, what of it? Here's the thing though, nowhere in this indictment is it mentioned that the victim was a dancer, exotic or otherwise. This is more likely fake news, just as it was when Andrew Tate accused another one of his victims of working in a sex club just to get a reaction out of her to impress his war room disciples. We're going to go through her entire story in the finale of Matrix of Lies. So far as this victim is concerned, all the grooming text conversations between Andrew and Aliona indicate that Andrew intended to marry her once she arrived in Romania. That, of course, is not what happened. The accusations against Tate that Fuckknuckle is referring to here are the in a continuous form charges, which the authorities charged Andrew with according to Romanian law. One of those involved physical and emotional violence, as we outlined in our episode Matrix of Lies Part 3. What's relevant about the American case is this. Florida has very strong defamation laws. Mm. And if you publish a defamatory statement to the public where, where you know it's going to hurt somebody's interests, it's going to hurt their reputation, and if you, and you, if you publish it and it, it actually has an effect on somebody's life, you have a case, right? So let's stop you right there to counter why you don't have a case. To start with, there's a serious flaw in your logic because Emma did not publish anything about the Tate brothers to the public. And even if she did, in order for it to be defamatory, what she said would have to be false. However, what Emma told her parents was happening at the house was absolutely taking place, making the raid on a complex to free her absolutely justified. So this asinine civil lawsuit of yours falls flat on its face right out of the gate. She lied in Romania. She sent text messages to people who are in Florida, mother, friends, so on and so forth, saying that I'm being held against my will, mm. this is going on, that is going on, it was all lies. Those people then took it and republished it to other people in their life, which ended up in having Andrew and Tristan arrested in Romania on these charges. It is illegal to defame somebody. Since it is, in fact, illegal to defame somebody, this celebrity ambulance chaser should watch his words, because as we are going to cover in the breakdown of the 400-page indictment document, nothing McBride is saying here is supported by evidence at all. 
The trafficking and webcam operation that Emma described to her parents is confirmed over and over and over again in transcripts of text conversations between Tristan, Georgiana, and Luana. They confirm exactly what Emma told her parents was happening at that house. And in the end, all Emma wanted to do was cut her losses on this trip and get out of the house. It is illegal to defame somebody. And there is no uh, greater impact that you can have on somebody's life than the deprivation of their freedom. That's absolutely true. Meaning there's no greater harm that the Tates could have done to deprive these victims of their freedom. See how that works? In the text messages back and forth between Andrew and Eleona, she was told repeatedly she was not to leave the house, not to shop, not to go to the park, nothing. And she was not only told she couldn't leave the house, she was told that was the final warning. That's deprivation of her freedom, which is exactly what the authorities were told was happening at that house before they raided it. In their house, sitting there, bored, completely in love with me. And of course, they don't go out. They're not allowed out. Like, oh, Tate's away, so they go out with their friends. No, 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 no. You don't go to the club with your friends. No. You stay in the house. You don't go nowhere. You're not, no restaurants, no clubs, nothing. This woman's false allegations against Andrew and Tristan in the United States wound up in having them incarcerated in Romania, which not only took away their freedom, it took away uh, their ability to operate as businessmen, it took away their ability to be uh, fathers to their children, brothers and friends to the people who, who depend on them, so on and so forth. That is a that is a very serious thing. She is the but for causation. Without her, none of this ever happens. Mm. And the only thing that we can really add here is, thank God for Emma's parents and friends. They made the right phone call to the American Embassy at the right time, and they shut down the Tate trafficking ring. They freed their daughter, they freed a serial rape victim, and two other girls who were brainwashed to the point where they can't even recognize their own victimhood. The Romanian government interviewed a bunch of different people in the case, and uh, two of the girls that they, that they used as witnesses against Andrew and Tristan actually said, hey, Andrew and Tristan are great. They have subsequently yeah. <laughs> went out to make videos. Yeah. These are, they're stand-up guys. They would never the Romanian, the Romanian authorities at the time said, well, we don't, uh, you've been brainwashed, sweetheart. Oh, yeah. So you don't really know what you're saying. So we're just gonna take this paternalistic approach to you and just say, you know, we're gonna speak for you for the time being. And she's like, I have a psych degree. I have not been brainwashed. What is happening is wrong. It is a lie. These men are innocent. You should take what I'm saying very seriously. But they didn't do that. Here's why they didn't do that. When the girls were interviewed by Dicot, both girls gave demonstrably false statements that completely contradicted each other regarding how they knew each other and how they knew and met the other people in the operation. And then those stories conflicted again with statements made by Gio and Lou. Further, these girls were instructed by Andrew, through their cousin Luke, to make videos about Andrew and Tristan like this one. I've never seen any of them being aggressive or rude. They've always respected, uh, respected people. No. N-am fost niciodată. Dacă eram amenințat, automat mai eram idiotă să stau în casă. Asta e mâna stângă, tatuajul ăsta, care scrie Tate Girl. The conversation transcripts where Andrew is directing Luke to do this are evidence in the Romanian indictment. There's ample evidence that both of these girls, Yasmina and Beatrice, who have made themselves known, were trafficked. Both of them groomed by Andrew, Yasmina from May 2021 to December 2022 when the compound was raided, and Beatrice for almost two years from February 2021 to December of 2022. These women are actually very lucky the court considers them to be victims instead of accomplices because both these particular girls facilitated the first rape of Aliona in a hotel room by plying her with wine and softening her up before Andrew came into the room to have his way with all three of them. Before we sued in Florida, we dug down on this woman she got a pass? A pass. A pass, oh, yeah. yeah. Does she have a pass? She's got a body count. She's got, <laughs> she's got a body count, and you see a modus operandi. Note the term body count. This is misogynist Tate terminology. See, according to the top groomer, a man can screw anything that moves without repercussion. But if a woman has slept with more than one man, she's considered to be damaged goods, according to Tate. I, a man can only cheat if he loves someone else. If I have a woman who I truly love, and I go out and f and I come back to her and I don't care about her and I only love my girl. That's not cheating. That's exercise. If she even talks to a dude, it's cheating. Because females are emotionally invested. 
can, can I ask you something about the um, the body count thing? Because we want we want the audience to know, so we need you to dive into it. I said that a lot of the world's problems could be fixed if women walked around with their body yeah. counts on their forehead. And now Tate's lawyer is using that same kind of terminology to attack a victim. She's got a body count and you see a modus operandi. This despicable man will now go on at some length, making the same mistake that Candace Owens did when that sad sack of a human released her own video doing the exact same thing. Defaming a girl who was a minor, abused by a series of men more than twice her age, one of whom was Keith Fox, a 58-year-old sexual predator convicted of statutory rape of two minors that was sent to prison for 24 years. Now, McBride is going to go through several minutes describing other inappropriate relationships that Emma had with these older men, all of whom had sex with her despite her being underaged. In the interest of time and decency, we are not going to go through any of that content for one simple reason. It does not matter. As a minor, she was considered to be, by the law, incapable of consenting to sex, which is why the term statutory rape is applicable here. It is incumbent upon the older party in a sexual relationship to know for certain that their sex partner is older than the age of consent. So none of her past history, sexual or otherwise, matters at all. The only thing that matters where the Tates and this victim are concerned is the timeline of events beginning November of 2021 when Tristan fished this victim off of Reddit and ending on April 11th of 2022 when the victim was rescued by the Dicot breach team. You see a long history of this person using sex as a means to lure men in and then after she has sex with men, she revokes consent post facto. She's been doing it for like 10 years. Yeah. It's worth noting here with regards to this case that Emma has made no accusation of rape. The sole charge where she is mentioned is as a trafficked victim under Tristan, along with two other victims. And the conversations where Tristan groomed this victim are completely documented and transcribed from Tristan's personal devices. Another fabrication that slanders this particular victim. She's been doing it for like 10 years. Yeah. Damn. 10 years, Joe? Emma was 15 years old in 2016 when Keith Fox was sent away, which makes her 22 years old in 2023. McBride says Emma has been executing a particular modus operandi for the past 10 years. That would make her 12 at the outset. This moron lawyer actually makes that same statement several times during this interview. Yeah. And when you connect it, you see a 10 year scheme. She thought that she could just continue to do what she was doing in America and go to Romania and do it there. Yet another instance of repetition of lies, hoping that somebody eventually believes them. Andrew and Tristan could not be more innocent. Yeah. You don't have to like everything that they say. You can hate what they say. Yeah. But just because you hate what somebody says, that does not rise to the level of criminality. Yeah. And you shouldn't be deprived of your freedom or want to deprive somebody of their freedom simply because they have an opposing viewpoint on politics, religion, faith, gender, whatever it is. Turn the other cheek, start a podcast, write a book, challenge them to, to, debate, to a debate, don't throw them in jail. More deflection. This case is not about politics or any other free speech nonsense. That's a smoke screen that the lawyer is throwing up with the intent to deflect. As the lawyer for four additional rape victims in the UK that are civilly suing Andrew Tate pointed out, Talk of the Matrix and false flags hold no weight in court. The survivors look forward to seeing him there. Query, because I think people don't care because it's not them. But what if it's your brother, your father, yeah. your uncle? How about we flip that around for you, you imbecile? What if the woman being trafficked was your sister, your mom, your aunt? What if your daughter was the person that McBride was just slandering in the previous segment? What would your response be then? Why was your first thought to defend the male relatives and not the female. Maybe think on that for a minute because that tells the world a lot more about you than you realize. But moving on, here are some false statements about the judges in the case and how they're handling it. The judges over there don't don't seem to be very influenced by outside policies. Um, we recently looked at the, the file, the case file against Andrew and Tristan, and they let them out after months of incarceration. It's not very often that you see one or two men who are accused of you know, leading an organized crime ring of human traffickers, and then they get let out and put back out on the street. Yeah, You have to ask yourselves, well, why has that happened? Right. Well, it, it happened because there came a point in time where the, the judges were actually able to look at the file, mm -hmm. and they were saying, and they have said, which is demonstrated by their release, there, there's a lot of problems with this. Mm -hmm. And unless there's more, um, we're not gonna hold them in. That is an indication of innocence. That is an indication of problems with the Romanian, with the Romanian case. 
another example of repetition of lies. And we've seen in the public sphere how tater tots glom onto statements like this to believe the tastes are innocent. McBride is intentionally misleading the audience to believe that his clients, who are out on judicial control, which is similar to being out on bail, are free men, and that is not the case. The brothers have to sign in daily at the local police station, and they are not allowed to leave Bucharest County of Ilfov. They are not innocent, and the trial is moving forward. Having read through the indictment, we can tell you there are no problems with this case or the evidence, and the relaxation of house arrest is in no way whatsoever indicative of innocence, as McBride has falsely stated here. So you have to ask yourself, well, why haven't they thrown out the case in Romania altogether? If it's weak, and it is weak, we can discuss it in, in, with great particularity. The reason why that hasn't happened is because there is this believe all women captain in the soy boy army prosecutor who has a personal vendetta for one reason or another against Andrew mm. and against Tristan. Note to self, when representing the public face of your defendant, try to avoid direct personal insults against the legal representative of the state. Calling the Romanian lawyer a believe all women captain in the soy boy army prosecutor is not going to earn you any points with the judge. The Romanian prosecutor has a job to do, and he's doing it well. Far better than this fat, balding, clout chasing f See? Two can play the insult game. So what you have with the Romanian prosecutor is something that's very typical. It's tunnel vision. He has a vision and he believes that he's right and no one's gonna tell him otherwise. Um, it is my hope that the Romanian justice system and the court sees this for what it is, looks at the file based on its merits and facts and does not listen to this guy because, because this guy shouldn't be listened to. This guy's not a good person. Mm -hmm. He's targeting them and people need to know about it. And again, telling the judge that the prosecutor is not a good person and the courts should not listen to him, well, it seems to us the prosecutor is the type of stand-up legal representative for the state that the Tates were not able to buy off, like Tate has so often bragged he was able to do. You can't give me problems. I'm on my way out. Haven't you noticed? Have you seen my life? Court case, court case, court case. Here I am, Captain. You can't lock me up. I'm too f***ing rich. You can't tell me to stay home. I'm too rich. Can't maybe wear a mask. Can't maybe get a dance. Can't tell me where to go. Can't tell me shit because I'm f***ing rich. If the Tates hate this guy, we're probably going to love him. One of the good distinctions about Romania is what is treated far more serious than in, in the United States is if, if you falsely accuse him mm -hmm. in court and we can prove that you falsely accused him in court then it's your ass okay then, then then you're in trouble it's like perjury plus one in the united states okay so let's talk about that for a minute sure emma gabby goes into romanian court she files a false complaint and testifies falsely she falsely accuses andrew and tristan in court because romanian law is so strong on somebody's accusations uh cases formed against them and they they eventually wind up in jail. McBride has just told the class he does not understand how the criminal investigation process works. The charges against the Tate brothers and their accomplices, let's not forget them, were brought against them by Dicot, not by Emma. An eight-month investigation started April of 2022 when the house was raided and Emma was freed resulted in a compilation of evidence against the Tates that was submitted in December of 2022 resulting in another raid on several Tate properties. The investigation continued and was cemented into the indictment that was filed in June of 2023. None of that has anything whatsoever to do with Emma. Once her statement was taken, it's up to the state to decide to move forward with charges, and Emma is just one of seven victims identified in this action. Since we're talking about Dicot real quick, it's it's also worthy to note that Dicot is filled with good people. Mm -hmm. They're getting a bad reputation in the press, but I actually think that Dicot is more honorable than the FBI. So a small correction here, Dicot is not getting a bad reputation over this. If anything, they've earned some international brownie points for making these arrests and conducting a very thorough professional investigation. There are good people over there who care about the truth and care about justice. They took her allegations very seriously because they're just not accustomed to women coming in their court lying about human trafficking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right? They, yeah. So they took it seriously. Yeah. Again, you're making the gigantic mistake of telling people these charges are based on the words of a single girl. And even if that was true, do you honestly believe professional law enforcement 
looking into crimes such as this on a regular basis would not have some interviewing techniques specifically designed to find holes in her story before conducting raids on a walled compound that is known to house weapons. We're trying to get the Romanian court to take notice of the fact that Emma's actually the wrongdoer and the Romanian system is also a, a victim of, of her scheme. Here we go again with the victim blaming, typical gutter lawyer tactic. Can we cover the six days or what led up to the six days? Sure. Emma Sorry. meets uh, Tristan on, on, on a dating site. Okay. Right? So, you know, Tristan's like any other dude. He's in Miami. He's scrolling away and he, um, she looks good. And I like you. You like me. She's like, he's a good looking guy. She's like, I like him. They meet up. We're going to make a suggestion to Joe McBride here. Joe, you should really read the court documents and the conversation logs and then watch the Tate Pimp tutorials on your client's webpage. Then move into the War Room transcripts. It is the men who contact the women through these sites. As was the case here, it's all in the chat logs. And Tristan the Pimp laid the honey on Emma really thick. McBride implies that Tristan was bored and scrolling profiles in Miami in December. In fact, the messages between Tristan and Emma had begun several weeks prior, in November, and they decided in those conversations to hook up in Miami when Tristan arrived for his business conference at the end of the month. It's very likely that Emma was targeted by Tristan due to the fact that she was in Miami, and Tristan had already made travel plans to get to Miami. Mm -hmm. She comes to a, uh, a, a war room event in Miami, um, oh wow, that was oh wow. That must have been recent when, when they were here with us on the boat. Dece it, December was, of 22, 21. Yeah, December 21. That was when yeah. they were here. I think it was when we did our Avengers pod around wow. that time. This is interesting. Shrek and Donkey say they were on a boat with the Tates the same weekend there was a war room event in Miami. That weekend when Tristan was attached to Emma's hip as the 32-year-old man at the time was grooming his 19-year-old victim. As Tristan's arm piece, Emma was invited to that event for the war room, while Tate Disciples had to pay thousands of dollars to attend. I didn't know that. Yeah, he met her in Miami physically here. Yeah, she she preys on guys in Miami. She's cold blooded, bro. Yeah. Cold cold blooded. So Damn. it could have been you. Yeah. They could've knew each anybody. other. Yeah. They, dude, they known each other for that. I didn't know they knew each other that long. They, they talk for a bit online. She represents herself as an affluent, uh, young, aspiring artist. For, <laughs> you know, she presents well. Um, she meets Tristan. One thing leads to another. Uh, they hook up. They have fun. And off he goes, you know, back to his life. And he starts to travel again. They, mm. they, they talk periodically over the course of that time. She uh, is interested in, in leaving to Romania uh, because she knows that he's there. He's like, yeah. And Tristan even like says, hey, look, you, you got a good life. Why do you want to leave? Oh, the politics here are too much. America is too aggravating. Again, McBride needs to read the conversations between these two. They're all published. By December 6th of 2021, Tristan was already suggesting to Emma that she move to Romania with him. Tristan wanted her there by January, but the victim didn't actually arrive until April of 2022. Again, we're going to cover all this in the breakdown of the indictment. So for now, we're simply going to say McBride's Emma origin story here is complete fiction. And if his clients try telling this story in court, they're going to be strung up by the Romanian prosecutor very quickly. He says, okay, you want to come? Come. So um, she's like, okay, uh, can I have your credit card so I can book a flight? Mm -hmm. She grabs his card, books herself a business class flight out to, out to Romania. Mm -hmm. And um, she's there for a few days. Mm -hmm. uh, and the first couple of days, everything is fine. And she realizes that she's not the only beautiful girl in town. Mm -hmm. She tries to uh, exert influence over him like she would do other guys, but he's not easily intimidated. Yeah. He just says, hey, listen, you know, you're here. Have a good time. Everything is all right. She tries to get involved in Andrew's personal business. He's, please don't get involved in my brother's business. That's, that's not your lane. Stay in your lane. You came here to do something good. Do it. Two days later, she's accusing him of human trafficking. So she calls the U.S. Embassy. So she's there at the house, and she calls the U.S. Embassy. Uh, or did she call her family first? Well, she called She called her family. So we, we mentioned her boyfriend in, yeah. in Florida. Mm -hmm. So she reaches out to him. So she calls her family and his, and her boyf ac boyfriend. Yeah. Right. So he he comes in, like, real hot. White like, horse. Cat, like, riding on a horse. Captain, yeah. cat, Captain Saberho. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Literally. <laughs> when meatheads, like McBride, 
make derogatory statements like this at somebody else's expense. And interviewers like Heckle and Jekyll here laugh along with him, that's when our hackles really go up. There's a lot of Tate interviews out there like that, where the interviewers are laughing along as Andrew Tate describes exactly how he trafficked women. So many red flags going through the archives and nobody said boo. Nobody's standing up to him or reporting him to the authorities. Now we've got McBride calling the victim a hoe in the public sphere and they're all having a good laugh at her expense. Just remember that McBride, when Emma and the other victims get the last laugh on your clients. He comes in like, you know, you're being human trafficked, this is what's going on, you need to go to the embassy, we need to get the embassy involved. Yeah. So she literally tells him, please don't do this, I take it all back, don't, don't, don't get the embassy involved, don't do this, don't do that. So McBride refers to Emma's boyfriend in Miami, insinuating that Emma was being unfaithful to this man by visiting Tristan in Romania. This story goes on for several minutes where these three pricks make one accusation after another about her. The man in question is a United States Marine who appeared to be a friend of the family contacted by Emma's parents after their text chat with Emma earlier. However, in the transcripts that McBride refers to in the complaint document, there is no indication this man was a love interest of Emma's at all. There's no love language between these two in the plaintiff's submission either, despite insinuations being made in that regard by McBride. If McBride has any evidence of a romantic relationship between Emma and the Marine, Joe failed to include it in his complaint document. Paragraph 89 calls the Marine a former or current lover. Paragraph 91 accuses the Marine of being in love or infatuated with Emma, when in fact what the Marine is doing is looking out for Emma who doesn't fully realize the dangerous situation she's in. From part 3 of Matrix of Lies, we know that another girl who tried to leave the house was thrown out into the cold with none of her belongings in her underwear in a very shady part of town by Gio and Lou who not only threatened to cut that victim's tits off in a private conversation, but intended to do damage to the recent plastic surgery sutures on the victim. In light of that evidence, the Marine was absolutely taking appropriate measures. Messages between them show the Marine urging Emma to get to the U.S. Embassy, where there is a USMC security detail. The U.S. Embassy is three kilometers from the Tate compound as the crow flies, but significantly further away by road. The Marine followed his chain of command, and followed the instructions given him by one of his contacts. Further, the Marine is specifically trained for this scenario, aware that there are protocols in place. He tells her, it's my literal job, Em. In contrast, Emma believes that she and her friend can sneak out quietly without anybody noticing to get to the nearby airport for their 6 a.m. flights to London that Emma paid for, and Aliona's family was in London. Emma is trying to avoid being caught in the middle of an armed raid, which is why she's asking the Marine to tell the embassy to stand down. Nothing in the presented conversations back and forth between these two contradicts this narrative, no matter what romantic insinuations are presented by the plaintiffs without evidence. In the end, the initiated raid resulted in the exposure of the Tate's webcam operation, trafficking ring, and criminal organization, as laid out in detail in the DICOT documents and indictment. So just like the plaintiff's complaint, these accusations in the interview against Emma are defamatory garbage meant to slander and intimidate the victims involved. But McBride is not done slandering this victim just yet. She's a, a serial, a serial cheater. Yeah. For, for, for sure, she's a serial extortionist. She's a, a serial liar. Here's the fact of the matter about any claim that Emma was motivated by money at any point in this scenario. Emma was offered by DICOT to join this case as a civil party as well as a victim, which would entitle her to financial damages and awards when the Tates are convicted. She turned this down exactly so that people could not say that she had such a motivation. The other victims are potentially looking at six-figure awards. And it says, uh, I'm talking to my friend about it now. She's saying you should try to get money from Andrew. They're talking about how to get money from Andrew before mm. they bounce to London. And then if you just scroll down below that, paragraph 86, this is cover tracks, like, always. Oh my I'm God. I'm going to pull some tears out. We're going to write a movie ASAP. Let's wow. email Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime. I'm dying inside. I'm laughing. They, they're just like, look, we're going to destroy these guys' lives. We're going to become famous. No one is going to believe that, that these guys are not guilty. And then we're going to have a, a Netflix series about it. So, Aliana was planning on leaving with Emma at some point during the night to take the flight to London. She had been forced into online sex work by Andrew on TikTok and was owed money for those videos, 
because Andrea had been exploiting her and ripping her off the entire time. Aliona had no money of her own, and she had been stuck in that OnlyFans house for months. It would make sense for Aliona to try to get some of her money before leaving, even if it required a little acting. Now, as for the conversation about winning awards or getting Netflix to buy their story, two things. First, it's pretty damned obvious they're using humor to deal with their current situation, a situation where most people would be freaking out. Humor is a known coping mechanism. Second, you can bet your bottom dollar someone is eventually going to make this court case into a movie. And when they do, hopefully the proceeds go into a fund that helps break other human trafficking rings just like this one. Let's go ahead and hit uh, some of these chats real fast. Uh, Andrew says his case has nothing to do with his webcam business, but a lot of YouTubers are using this to call him a liar because there's an indictment on Reddit that says his case is connected to his past webcam uh, business. business. Please clarify this. It's very, very important to understand that we're talking about a two-year time frame here with regard to the current case. Things that Andrew Tate said or did or participated in three years ago, four years ago, 10 years ago are not relevant. So again, if McBride had actually read the legal documents in this case, Mr. Public Face of the Legal Team would know this is a completely false statement. McBride is saying the Romanian case deals exclusively with a two year time frame, when in fact one of the victims that Andrew is charged with trafficking is a woman from the UK whose claims go back to 2016. The victim was exploited by the Tate Criminal Organization from the end of 2016 until April of 2018. Her sworn statements are found in the evidence files and in the indictment of June 15, 2023. So no, Joe, your two-year time frame claim is absolutely false. And yes, the things Tate did three, four years ago are absolutely relevant. I'm not to plug or anything, but in my course, we talk about weaponizing your attention because that's the only thing a man I has. I say plug away. What's the website? It's it's CobraTate.com, and okay. I've got a course on there that basically explains how I got girls to work for me. For Tate's my PhD, right? It's a PhD course, Pimping yeah. Hose Degree. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I was wondering what it PhD, <laughs> Pimping Hose Degree. But if we go back 10 years, of course, we're into the time frame where Tate admits he was a drug dealer in the UK because his kickboxing paychecks had begun to dry up. When I was 24, 25, I sold drugs. Long time ago now. I was a fighter. But fighting wasn't paying the bills, sold drugs, whatever. He's a changed person. He's a changed man. He's metamorphosized and transitioned and blossomed into a strong, God-fearing, pro-men, pro-health, uh, pro-business man since that time. Was he involved in the webcam business for a time? Yes, that's a long time ago. The Tate webcam business is not ancient history. It was in operation when the first raids happened, Joe, right up to April of 2022. Aliona was on webcam under the supervision of Georgiana, who is charged with her trafficking as the bottom bitch in the Tate organization. Does the webcam business have anything to do with the case that he's involved in now? No, it does not. Yes, it absolutely does. Everything about the webcam business is exposed. The girls who were working, how much they made, when they paid the bottom bitches, the devices that were used, the bank accounts to receive the money, the transfer method is all in the indictment of June 15th of 2023. So this again is completely false reporting from the public face of the Tate legal team. Does his speech or his comments from years ago have anything to do with the case right now? No, it does not. When your client sells courses online describing how he grooms girls from the internet to exploit them sexually and financially on camera in the exact same manner described not only by the other victims, but also by Tristan in his conversations with Gio and Lou, you can rest 100% assured those videos are going to be used against your client in court. The next statement McBride makes explains why the Tates are targeting Emma with the court case in Florida. Emma mm. is the, the key uh, to the city here. She's the thing, person upon which all things turn. If you remove Emma from the case entirely, does it fall apart? No. You still have six victims, dating back to 2016, that have all made sworn statements. You still have the chat logs between Andrew and Tristan and their victims. You have Tristan conspiring with Gio and Lou to do harm to the victim And that hierarchy proved the existence of the organized criminal group the four defendants are accused of creating. All of this has nothing to do with Emma whatsoever. It's in court right now, and she's being sued. Does her conduct arise to the level of criminality? Yes. Will she be prosecuted in Palm Beach? There's a substantial likelihood that she will be. Okay. Um, nice. And will these... I was going to uh, ask that next. Yeah. Should these 
what we're doing in Florida, should this exonerate them fully across the board in terms of the Romanian case? It should. And, uh, you know, that's uh, this, this is one of our, our masterful moves on the chessboard. McBride's big master move on the chessboard, he says, is to try suing this victim and her family based on events that happened to her when she was a minor in an attempt to exonerate the criminals in Romania. Maybe this point of intersect for all the different legal teams is getting his jurisdictions confused. Because no matter what happens in the Florida civil case, it will not change the text conversations and evidence in the Romanian criminal trial. This is 100% witness intimidation. Further, through the Florida civil case, they are intimidating not only Emma, but also the rape victim, who is named in the same suit. We're overwhelming um, all the systems with truth. We are not running from the facts here. We're yeah. pumping the truth out for digestion. We're making it so palatable and so overwhelming that, that the only reasonable conclusion has to be that these guys walk and she gets prosecuted. Another admission from this POS, acknowledging this campaign of misinformation against the victim in an attempt to sway public opinion. She'll also have to endure my cross-examination here in in the in the uh, in the civil case. Yeah, she's a she's <laughs> she's a defendant. Yeah. Andrew and Tristan are plaintiffs. She is a defendant. She's yeah. a named defendant in the civil case. The idea of me having her on the stand. Oh, you're gonna kill her, bro. Forget it. I will rip her to shreds. Yeah. Body bag. She has body bag for, for sure. She has <laughs> no, she has no chance of survival. Listen to this misogynistic garbage. What kind of lawyer talks like this about anybody? Never mind about a young woman. No chance of survival. Rip her to shreds. Get her a body bag. One of the two stooges says, you're going to kill her. And these two chuckle fucks are just egging him on. In a civil case, this type of character assassination is not your job. Your job is to make your client whole, not to publicly embarrass or harass the other party. As a legal representative for your clients in a civil case, we should not even know your name. And you certainly should not be on a speaking tour talking about a criminal matter in a foreign country of which you have demonstrated you know sweet bugger all about. Yet here you are in what appears to be a celebrity publicity tour. So this lawsuit in Florida isn't about making the Tates whole. This is nothing more than a public smear campaign designed to harass the victims into capitulation. And the easiest way to tell that's the case is because we've heard all about it from you in defiance of court orders. If this wasn't an orchestrated public shame campaign to sway public opinion to the Tates, we would never have heard anything about it, and it would have been settled behind closed doors. This is not only completely unprofessional, intimidating language, it could and probably should be taken as a threat against her personal safety. The idea of me having her on the stand. Oh, you're going to kill her, bro. Forget it. I will rip her to shreds. Yeah. Body bag. She has body bag for, for sure. She has, <laughs> no, she has no chance of survival. And just so the audience understands, because so you guys might be wondering, well, well, hold on, she's a defendant. Why is she taking a stand? Uh, guys, she has no Fifth Amendment privilege in a civil case. Nope. So she has to take the stand. And discovery is a whole lot more invasive. Oh, now I see why they don't want you guys to put the evidence out, because through discovery, you have all their phone records. It's depositions, phone records. I mean, we're, she, we are, we're going after all of it. So newsflash for this lawyer, and we're really using that term very loosely at this point, you don't get time if a civil judgment goes against you. Any competent legal counsel would know that. We can only assume that Bride hasn't read any of the indictment at this point because he'd know that the phone and text messages between Tristan and Emma nailed Tristan to the cross. What we've created is brilliant. So we do completely deserve it, but... At the same time, we're scumbag pieces of shit until we don't. As for Chucklehead here coming to the epiphany that the civil case entitles the plaintiffs to phone records, well guess what genius, all the records that you're talking about are from the plaintiff's own phones, so they already have them. What are y'all suing her for? How much? Right now it's five million dollars. Okay. Look, which well, she doesn't have that. She compared to what clean. they lost, uh, that's yeah, yeah, that's nothing. A lot. A lot I think of, this is more of a sending a message. Yeah. Than yeah, you know, a lot of people are like, this is this is Andrew and Tristan Tate. Why, why is it not five billion dollars? According to the Romanian authorities that seized the Tate assets, five million dollars is the net worth of either brother. Ten million dollars total. So five billion dollars, as mentioned, is a level of wealth that the Tates would never ever see in a hundred lifetimes. There's a few reasons, right? It's number one, 
We know she doesn't have it. Hell no. She only got, right. got 1M. Right. She probably got 20,000. She called one of her white knights. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Number two, we didn't want the court to think that this was strictly about money. Yeah. Do they deserve to be compensated for their damages? Way more, of, yeah. Of course. But this is about the pursuit of truth. So yeah. when we were bouncing around the ideas of money and what should we do, it's got to look. And, you know, we were like... You know, what is five million dollars? Five million dollars is the cost of a Bugatti. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> it was like, yeah. I, I think I need a Bugatti out of this at yeah, least. Yeah. For being an absolutely overpriced, useless, and fragile vehicle, this Bugatti that Andrew Tate does not even own by his own admission sure does seem to serve as the core of identity for everyone involved in the Tate criminal organization. It's amazing that the Volkswagen Group, who owns Bugatti, hasn't issued a cease and desist order from the Tates and their legal team to stop using their name in every bloody interview to pump their image, given the current extremely negative connotation connected to a Tate endorsement. He deserves to get it. Yeah, no, and, and more. Both I mean, of them this, do. But yeah. after wasting the embassy's time, the police, everybody, that's like, isn't that federal? It, uh, it could be, but it they haven't be. brought criminal cases against uh, a criminal case against. One more time for the slow people in the class. This case has seven victims. Nobody wasted the embassy's time or the police's time. The raid on the Tate properties discovered a human trafficking ring, headed by an organized criminal group. But keep showing the class that you don't understand the subject material by making preposterous propositions like that one. What's her legal team strategy? Are they just trying to delay, delay, delay at this point? Well, they, they, they just want to paint her as a victim. They want to say that Andrew and Tristan are, are the bad guys, mm -hmm. that her client um, is, you know, is one of other victims, and it couldn't be further from the truth. They are portraying her as a victim because she actually was a victim of the Tate criminal organization. If not for the calls made and the actions taken at the time, Emma would likely have been into submission just like the other girls in the Tate organization and the unfortunate ladies who have been trapped by other war room members that use the Tate tactics. I did hear about this that that the, there's a like there's different versions of the Romanian indictment. Um one that alleges like that the there was like that Kids? the case has more extensive than just the past year or two that there's they have a multitude and years of evidence and stuff like that i don't know if that that makes that, make, that makes no sense it makes no sense to you joe because you obviously haven't read the indictment it's right there in black and white for all to see the truth is the truth and if the romanian court which i know it does cares about the truth andrew and tristan will walk free and they've done right by them so far, at least with, you know, getting them off a of house arrest and, and um, you know, releasing them in the first place, house yeah. arrest. I think they're they're starting to see that, hey, man, maybe these women aren't uh, telling, is, the truth. telling the truth here. Yeah. Back to the house arrest nonsense. Listen, when the brothers were on house arrest, every day they spent in a renovated warehouse with the luxuries of life surrounding them was credited against their inevitable sentencing. That's hardly punishment. Now that they're under judicial control, that tally has been halted. So instead of being forced to stay here, they'll actually be punished by being forced to stay here. And here serves the public interest far better. Did some of the charges get dropped, from what I understand? Yeah, some some of the charges got, got dropped. Um, you know, they, they dropped this, they put that on it. They, they're doing what they can do. This is the prosecutor and the government. Yeah. They're doing what they can do to make the case survive. Mm -hmm. They understand that certain charges just didn't have no factual allegations. The rape charges were dropped, them. right? Yeah, yeah, of course they were, course because yeah. rape never happened. Exactly. First off, that is an outright lie. The rape charges against Tate were not dropped. What actually happened is that some crimes with multiple counts were upgraded. For example, instead of four counts of human trafficking, Andrew Tate now faces a single more serious charge of trafficking humans in a continuous form with four material counts, indicating an ongoing pattern. Just as the two counts of against Andrew Tate were upgraded to in a continuous form as he repeatedly assaulted the same victim. There are also other crimes that were peeled away from this case, but they are still under investigation. Those crimes include trafficking of minors, with a special emphasis on Tristan, additional human trafficking charges as new victims are coming forward, influencing statements where the defendants are caught dead to rights through recorded conversations telling cousin Luke, a registered witness in this case, to have the girls still under their control release videos in support of the brothers, aiding and abetting the perpetrator, which involves two of the Tate security personnel, and money laundering. These charges are still being investigated 
and will likely result in at least one more criminal trial against Tate and other members of their criminal organization. That's most of the interview covered, but let's get Joe McBride, public face of the Tate Brothers legal team, to summarize the nonsense that he spewed over the course of the last hour, at two times speed, because he does tend to drone. Uh, the case of Andrew and Tristan Tate is not just about them. Uh, they're, they're sort of the gatekeepers um, for, uh, for many men who feel under attack. If Andrew and Tristan, somehow their situation does not work out uh, the right way, uh, their attackers and the people who are trying to cancel them and incarcerate them will come for everybody else who's behind them. Um, that's you, um, and that's me, and that's everybody else who sees the, the, the world the way that we do. We may not agree on everything, but what we do agree on is men have the right to self-determine, men have the right to be powerful, men have the right to participate in free marketplace of ideas, speak their mind without going to jail for it. And uh, we need to protect that. Uh, men have made this world great, men have made this country great, and uh, I would encourage everybody, especially Tate detractors, to read the complaint with an open mind and uh, you know, let me know what you think once you, once you get to the end of that complaint. Classic Tate propaganda. If they can come for us now, they can come for you next. Well, only if you are also an international sex trafficking artist, in which case we will cover your criminal trial as well. So that gives everyone a fairly concise breakdown of the nonsense coming out of the Tates through their legal team. These misinformation campaigns are desperate attempts to sway public opinion in the Tates' favor. But the Romanian indictment paints a completely different story, with or without Emma listed as a victim. This criminal case against the Tate Brother criminal organization may possibly be only the first in a lineup of cases exposing their criminal activities. The prosecutors have really opened a Pandora's box with this case, one that is becoming more and more exposed every day, as associates of the Tates are being arrested for similar crimes using similar tactics as the war room chat transcripts have taught them all to do. In the grand scheme of things, the trafficking victim Emma may well become the least of the Tate's concerns. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Common Sense Skeptic. When we first started covering this case, we had no idea it was going to be this involved or this immersive. Rest assured, there are other topics on the agenda, but this one has taken a priority due to the severity of Tate's influence on the younger generation. We've got one more Tate episode on the production schedule, that's the finale to Matrix of Lies, which is going to break down the entire 400-page indictment, then we're looking forward to getting back to some topics that are a little more lighthearted. Please give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, family, teenagers, whoever you can think of that can benefit from this information, and subscribe to the channel, then hit the notification bell so that you'll know when the Common Sense Skeptic returns.